Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are gonna be talking about patina. Uh, so you know we've been working on the uh, Type 3. Last episode we had Detail Daz in the garage uh, doing a will it look good and we got the uh, Type 3 looking really nice and clean. Uh, now it's time to patina it. So basically we have a lot of options on making it shine up and bringing some sort of luster to it. Uh, when talking about patina, you could do things like linseed oil. Um, there's a lot of patina sauces on the market uh, that will bring uh, some sort of lot luster to it or even clear coating it. Um, I've built a lot of patina vehicles in the past. Uh, up here, I'll show you pictures of, um, here's an example of a linseed oil uh, bug I did. Um, here's an example of a uh, a patina uh, classic truck that I did with the same product that we're going to be using now. Um, so you can use pretty much anything you want. You kind of want to just look at the vehicle and decide what's going to work best for you. Um, one of the drawbacks to linseed oil is it does not ever fully dry or cure and it will stay uh, sticky or tacky or gummy. Um, so that's not the route that I want to take for this. What I want to do is actually clear coat it. Um, so we're going to basically be using uh, our own patina sauce, uh, which is a brush on uh, clear coat. This is a self leveling brush on clear coat. Um, it's not one of the patina sauces that are labeled on the market for automotive that you may see. Uh, this is a inexpensive self-leveling clear coat uh, that you could find for less than $30. Once we get this on, if you like the way it looks, uh, just give me a follow uh, on my IG account. Shoot me a DM uh, and I'll be more than happy to share the information of what we're actually using. Um, so right now, let's get the uh, Type 3 pulled into the garage and start brushing it on. All right, so it's patina time. Uh, I'll be uh, using our patina sauce. Uh, going over the car, I'll be using a, a foam brush, a three inch and two inch foam brush going back and forth. Uh, for mostly car, I'll be using three inch uh, foam brush. If I do need to get in any smaller or tighter areas, I'll, I'll switch back and use the uh, two inch foam brush. Uh, this is self leveling, so you don't really have to worry about um, whether you're getting brush strokes, uh, just make sure that you uh, cover it fully, uh, get a nice heavy uh, coat, um, try and watch for runs, you don't want it dripping all over the place, uh, but just make sure you do get it a good heavy stroke, uh, a heavy coat, and um, don't worry too much about uh, brush, brush marks or anything like that. Since it is self leveling once it dries, it'll actually um, level out. So again, as mentioned before, if you wanna know what we're using, uh, just follow me on uh, IG. I'll have my link down below. Um, shoot me a, a DM and I'll give you uh, exactly uh, details of exactly what we're using if you like the finished product. All right, let's get started. Uh, other tip is, um, since you may be leaning over the car and touching it, uh, start from your roof down. Uh, this way you're not leaning over any wet spots. So I'm gonna get started on the roof down. Uh, use a stool and then we'll go from there.
is uh, try and finish uh, one, well definitely finish one panel at a time. Uh, this way uh, it doesn't dry on you, um, so go panel by panel. Through it, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. If you see runs, go over it now. Um, they're not as easy to get out, especially uh, this is kind of a semi gloss. So, you know, if you start to mess with anything, uh, sand it, polish it, then it's gonna turn into a gloss. So, just try and get them out now. This way, uh, you're pretty much one and done. You don't have to mess with it after the fact. it for the first coat I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more and then go over it with the second coat uh, two coats for me is max um, even one coats good enough uh, this is good for uh, outdoors it's UV protected it's um, oil based um, so it's not it's not even like the cheaper water-based stuff that they sell nowadays um, so this way it'll go over your older lacquers it'll go over pretty much any paint you you want it to go over 
Um, it'll harden up really good. It's flexible. So it's a really good uh, product to finish in. So I'll let this dry a little bit more, go over with the second coat, then I'll pull you guys off the uh, tripod and let you see it. All right, so I decided to take you off the tripod and show you after first coat. Um, it's still drying, so I'm not able to put the second coat on yet, um, but I will give you a walk around and show you how it is. Uh, we are in the garage, so I can't. <laughs> We are in the garage, so I can't do a full backup, so it might be kind of close up on the car, but either way, it shows you the detail of it, but uh, you can see it. it's pretty much, this is, is, this is pretty much the sheen that it'll keep. It might dull down just a hair more than this, um, but you can see the reflection of the lights um, for being brushed on, I mean, it it flows out really really nice you can see on that door let's see if i can get a reflection on it you can pretty much just see shadow and stuff but you kind of see my hand between the light right there but i mean like i said for something that we brushed on and it is durable. I've used this on other vehicles. Um, to me, it's a great finish. In the more pitted areas, it does. The other thing is, since we did brush it on, uh, I dab it in those areas. So it will actually uh, stay in those areas um, and keep it from further rusting. It kind of encapsulates it. Um, but that's kind of why on this car I wanted to do definitely do a second coat. Uh, these areas, you can see it's shiny here and it's duller here. Um, these areas did suck in the clear uh, a lot more. So that's why I kind of want to go over it with one more coat. But yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, some people don't like clear coats on patina cars. Some people do. Uh, some people like some of the patina sauces or the um, like detailing sauces. Uh, the only thing I don't like about those is they're less permanent. They have to be reapplied. Uh, this is a, a true clear, uh, so it does not have to be reapplied. So it's less maintenance. Yeah, see, I mean, you can tell it's it's getting dark outside, um, starting to get uh, sunset um, or beyond sunset. But you can see the sheen off that front fender; it's just beautiful. But yeah, like I said, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, I do have a lot more plans for this fastback. Again, if you want to know exactly what we used, uh, follow me on Instagram and shoot me a DM and I will let you know exactly what we used on this. Like I said, it is a true clear coat. It's not uh, one of those sauces that you have to reapply. It's not a linseed oil that will stay sticky. This will dry. Um, and you can wash the vehicle like normal. You could go over it with the, your Meguiar's Instant Detailer. You could treat it just like a regular paint. Or you could <laughs> ignore it and leave it like a stepchild. Um, either way, it's uh, to me, it's a, a great uh, alternative to a lot of the other stuff that's on the market. And leaves a, a great finish in. It's easy, uh, user-friendly to apply, and um, reasonable, a lot cheaper than some of the other um, brush-on or hand-laid-on clear coats that are new to the market or, or on the market right now. All right, so I'm going to 
call it an evening and I'm gonna probably either later today tonight um, if it's still warm enough if not first thing tomorrow put that second coat on it and then I will pull it outside for you guys once that second coat is fully dry so you can see it in the sunlight and that would wrap up the video all right see you guys in a minute or two all right so the car is fully dry now brought it outside so you can see it in the uh, daylight you can see the full shine on it looks really good i'll give you a full walk around Let's see if you can see reflection in it you can see shape uh well actually yeah you can see it Full reflection of me walking around it. Uh, gloss came out really, really nice on it. Lay down really flat. You can see in the roof, you can see the palm trees um, in the background. Um, again, uh, just for being brushed on, this hasn't been color sand or buffed. Um, it's just as you see it as we laid it on uh, fenders again I'll get more close in close on it um, doors so you see the reflection of the uh, roof of the house came out really nice um, in my opinion for something that's just brushed in brushed on I already started bolting on uh, the bumper and some of the trim back on the car. We'll go on this side of the car. See reflection of the tree. Again, you can see here reflection reflection of the tree. The skyline in the background. You can see the sunset. Uh, the different colors of the sun, the oranges, and everything like that trees in the background again like I said for something that was a uh, you can see the Sun right there again for something that was just brushed on laid down really really flat this hasn't been color sand or buffed um, looks really really nice uh, also for it, adhesion uh, I don't know if you guys remember uh, the fender basically uh, right here was uh, pushed in and bent and also um, above the fender right here, I actually uh, yesterday uh, took this fender off, banged it out, um, and straightened it. Uh, so, and that was done after we clear coated it. Um, and you can see the clear did not uh, crack or anything like that, it, it held up. Um, so again, this this is uh, really really good. I need to uh, finish putting on uh, the headlight rings and stuff like that. Um, but I do have a sneak peek of what's to come for the uh, fastback right here. This will be on the next episode. We have a set of 17 inch uh, Porsche Fouche uh, King Crabs. Uh, we have, and if you don't know what King Crabs are, it's basically where the fronts uh, are offset out, and uh, the backs, of course, are just uh, stock 17 by 7. Uh, the fronts are 17 five and a halfs, and the they are offset so that they have a high high offset so that the uh, tread and the wheels sits as far inset inward um, mimicking basically like a narrow beam um, these are cut faces meaning that the uh, insides of the um, where they would be solid are actually cut out uh, these are a nice custom set of wheels uh, that we will be putting on the Type 3 on the very next episode, so stay tuned for that.
All right, so that wraps it up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, clear coat the Type 3. Again, if you're curious on what I used, uh, make sure you're following my Instagram account. I have the link down below. Just shoot me a DM and I will let you know uh, what I actually used. Again, it's something uh, very inexpensive. I'm talking uh, less than $30. And it's something that's super durable, uh, not water-based, so it's not gonna wash off. It uh, will withstand the sun, harsh weather. You can wa wax it, uh, you could polish it, you could do pretty much anything to it, and it's gonna basically uh, last the time. Um, again, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe down below. Uh, stay tuned for next episode where we're going to be tossing these bad boys on. Uh, hopefully in the same episode, I'll adjust the uh, stance on this. Uh, get this thing sitting right on those wheels because that's basically going to um, set those wheels off. Uh, proper stance. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. See you on the next episode.